So hi, everyone. Um, yeah, thanks for having me here. And I'd like to talk a little bit about what I'm going to call a second wave of gold standard Hebrew tree banks. And I realize that the word tree banks might not be that familiar to everyone here, especially those of you not working on language data, but I think it's a really important topic, and I hope I'll be able to get some of you excited for it. I'd like to start by thanking our team at the Hey, hey, somebody is open. Please, please put a mute. If you're not a speaker, oh, please I'm put yourself on mute. The presentation. Um, I'll continue. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to thank um, our team at the Israeli Association for Human Language Technologies. And none of this work would be possible without them. And a lot of what I'm talking about is actually certainly not my own work alone, um, but would not uh, be here without these people. Um, the Israeli uh, Association of Human Language Technologies is funded by the National Digital Office and the Israeli Innovation Authority. And you can see what we're doing at our website down there. I'd also like to thank um, the IAHLT members, which are a bunch of companies and other organizations which contribute to uh, the IAHLT and basically get matched funding from the Israeli government. So this is a big win-win uh, for Israeli uh, language technology, in my opinion. So about tree banks, um, tree banks are basically a way to construct linguistic data sets that gives you information about how the words in sentences in some language, in this case Hebrew, relate to each other. So at the top right here, we see a sentence, and it's all about uh, the connections between the words. So this sentence tells us that some people are coming from Thailand to Israel, and you can tell that the people who are coming are people because there's a subject relation between the word migiim uh, and the word anashim. And then from Megim to Thailand and Israel, telling you that those are the participants in this action. I'm wondering, by the way, how many people know this sentence, have seen it before, think it's familiar. Uh, if you uh, know it, then maybe give a shout out in the chat. I'd be curious to see how many of the participants have seen it. This is um, a somewhat famous sentence for Israeli NLP because it's uh, the first sentence in the Hebrew Tree Bank, which is a very venerable resource, which has been around for about 20 years now, starting with a paper by Simon et al. 2001 and developed by the Mila um, Institute. So um, even if you don't really work with tree banks and you say, ah, that's some quaint uh, linguistic representation, all I really do is um, work on, uh, I don't know, predicting stars for reviews or trying to predict mental health on uh, form data from uh, Hebrew or something else. Probably if you're using language data in computational ways in Hebrew today, then you are either directly or indirectly using the Hebrew tree bank, whether you know it or not. Why? Because if you want to split words like uh, me Thailand into me and Thailand, well, guess what? You're doing morphological segmentation. Pretty much every tool uh, that does this today is trained on the Hebrew tree bank. If you want to know about proper names because you want to know that Thailand is a country or a place, well, guess what? You're using either part of speech tagging for proper nouns or you're using named entity recognition, which is also built on top of the Hebrew tree bank. If you're using lemmatization for whatever purpose, information extraction, IR, well, if you want to know that Megiim is a kind of Hegia, because it's a related word, same dictionary entry, you're using lemmatization. Guess what that's trained on? So tree banks are really, really central foundational technologies for NLP, and the Hebrew tree bank is the one that we have for Hebrew. Um, another bunch of applications that I should mention in case, um, again, some of you might not be aware of the centrality of uh, tree banks to NLP is um, that they basically give us a better idea of who did what to whom in sentences in a general way, as opposed to trying to memorize or learn a specific downstream task by just using label data for that particular task. They give us access to discourse knowledge, so things like speech attribution, opinion mining. If you want to know who said what to whom, well, guess what? It's in free bank information. Um, and a lot of the current state-of-the-art approaches that combine um, hybrid models of neural networks with rationalistic approaches basically contain free banking in some way or another either as a feature to more complex systems or as a pre-training task, multitask learning target, or something else. All right, I'll stop praising tree banks at this point so that we can get on with things. Um, if I think that the tree bank is so great, the question might be, why am I talking about a second wave of tree banks? What's wrong with the tree bank that we have? Well, I think that the tree bank that we have is great, but there are some things that we could want to have on top of it. First of all, I should point out that the Hebrew tree bank, which we are all using, is um, now containing data that is 30 years old. If you actually read some of the texts in it, you'll see that they discuss Shi'ur uh, Arnona for the text year 1989. Okay, so that's that was um, a long time ago, um, and uh, it doesn't mention things like say Google or Twitter, which simply didn't exist. On top of them not existing, um, it also doesn't discuss discuss web topics for a very simple reason. It covers the news genre. 
So this is an entirely news based corpus. It only has newspaper language in it. And that leads to um, tools being trained on it, performing very badly on, say, social media. On top of that, even for the news data that's in it, there are a lot of errors in it, um, in part because it's been converted so many times. And it's great that it's been converted from one standard to the next to still be up to date. But those conversions have created a lot of errors. And even without them, there are a lot of things that are wrong with it. So if you look carefully at it, you'll see things like uh, Tel Aviv is not tagged as a proper noun in the course, in, in the corpus. In fact, none of the proper names of Israeli place names that are also normal names are tagged as proper nouns. That might seem a little bit weird. Um, lemmas are wrong. The lemma of Hakol is uh, consistently Hechil, which is kind of strange. Um, so there are a lot of things that were missed, and we would really like to have an updated corpus. Another problem with the current corpus is um, the tokenization conventions. Um, the Hebrew tree bank contains a lot of inserted tokens. So things like Bepinkascha get analyzed into Bepinkas Shel Ata, uh, which might be nice if you're trying to understand possessives or something like that, but also can lead to catastrophic failures if uh, a system hallucinates strings, which will happen because there are going to be errors. And these end up either confusing uh, downstream users or downstream applications. It also complicates aligning multiple um, NLP uh, system outputs. For example, if you want to uh, do something like entity recognition or co-reference resolution, it would be nice to actually be able to align to the text that exists. Um, and this is also the way that things are done in other languages in um, a standard called universal dependencies or UD. And this is uh, probably the most common standard for tree banking right now. So for example, if you look at Arabic data sets, they don't have these inserted tokens and do something like uh, just a pinkas plus ha. Or in this example, I have here ashabuhu with uh, just a hey uh, as the possessive. So what are we working on? Um, well, on the one hand, we're working on updating the existing Hebrew tree bank because we think it's great and we don't want to throw it away. Uh, we are building a new version of the tree bank, which you can see at the GitHub link on this slide. Um, it's freely available. And this version um, is valid by current universal dependency standards. Uh, there's a special validator that's used for tree banks today. It's comparable to annotation practices in other languages, and especially we're looking at Arabic. It um, makes it easier to find named mentions and has more consistent part of speech tagging. And also it completely removes inserted tokens with the result that all complex word forms in Hebrew are just the sum of their segments. The advantage of this is that you can take approaches to Hebrew word segmentation that are basically based on just classifying for each character, whether it's the beginning of a new um, word form or not. Um, but this is not enough for us because, as I pointed out, the data in the Hebrew tree bank is quite dated. It's 30 years old, only covers uh, the news genre. So another major task of our project is to build uh, new tree banks to supplement the HTB. Our goals are to cover current topics, to cover a wide range of genres, including data from the web, but also spoken data. And ultimately, we want to have enough data that we're more competitive or similar to what I'd call real high resource language uh, material. For example, the level of resources we have for things like English. Um, this is our current plan for um, constructing new data sets. Um, it's divided into written and spoken data. The current Hebrew tree bank contains about 6,000 sentences. We're planning to add uh, about 50,000 sentences in a variety of genres, meaning we're going to scale up by an order of magnitude, order of 10. The written data includes things like technology blogs from the internet so that we can talk about Google and Twitter, um, Wikipedia, which is kind of mandatory and also convenient license-wise, financial documents from the Israel Securities Authority, um, more contemporary news, so yes, we do want to cover newswire material, but we want it to be from right now. Uh, the Women Blogger Corpus, Civil Rights Corpus from Kol Zchut, which is available in Hebrew and Arabic. So we're going to be doing some Arabic data as well um, uh, next year, hopefully. And then uh, some Twitter data as well. Finally, for spoken, we're currently looking at parliament proceedings from the Knesset and television data from the Israeli Public Broadcasting Corporation. Uh, to give you a kind of taste of what these things look like, you can see some uh, sample sentences here. Uh, the first one is from Tech Blogs and says, You can bet that in 1990 uh, in a newspaper, those words didn't appear. Uh, the Wikipedia data, which is divided into different categories. So uh, we sampled in a category based fashion. One of the categories is biographies and contains, uh, for example, biographies of athletes or other uh, famous people, politicians, um, all sorts of uh, figures. Uh, in this case, it's Shahar Peram, a tennis player. And the third one is from the civil rights data set. Um, you'll notice that the syntax is something that um, you might not be surprised to learn wouldn't parse well if you just trained on the Hebrew tree bank. So something like uh, This is a type of text that's not represented in the uh, current data sets that we have, 
and that's why we want to support this broader coverage initiative. Um, finally, I'd like to talk a little bit about how we're doing this and what is the level of performance that we're getting. Parsing 50,000 sentences is difficult because you can't do it fully manually. It's too time consuming. And ultimately, when you're parsing this large amount of data, it's also difficult to maintain consistency because annotators change, they forget what they've done, and they can be inconsistent amongst themselves. So ideally, we'd like to correct NLP output, which gives us some measure of consistency and also facilitates the work by a lot. But of course, if you parse things using HDB, as I've mentioned, you're going to get errors. And um, it's not going to be accurate, especially at the beginning of the process. So our approach has been to leverage the revising uh, version of the Hebrew tree bank to train new NLP models using state-of-the-art technologies for each task, then manually correct the output in a classic cycle process, retrain our tools, and continue tagging that way. This means that high accuracy is really, really crucial, and I mean that for both the automatic components and for the human correction. In terms of the NLP pipeline, we're relying pretty heavily on uh, transformer-based technology, and especially the newly released Aleph Bird transformer, um, using the uh, BERT architecture from uh, the recent paper by Secker et al. 2021. Uh, this is a large plain text based uh, mass language modeling task train transformer model, which allows us to predict on unseen data with higher accuracy than we would otherwise be able to outside of the newswire domain. Uh, we train a complete tool chain uh, using state of the art um, frameworks. All of them pretty much rely on transformers right now, except for uh, morphological segmentation, but we plan to get that in um, pretty soon. And if you're interested in what the accuracy looks like compared to off-the-shelf tools, I can show you why it's worth um, building your own, which is specialized for Hebrew. Um, here are some examples for off-the-shelf toolkits. Stanza, the popular toolkit from Stanford, which does not use transformers, but is neural and uses um, pretty similar ideas. Trankit, which is a more recent transformer-based one, um, but not Hebrew language specific. And on the right, our scores using a Hebrew language specific transformer and a bunch of tricks and um, lexicon data that we have for this language. And you can see that the boost in performance is quite high, especially if you consider that all the scores in this table are end to end. So um, when you're looking at part of speech tagging and it's 97%, that's including tagging errors. Uh, I'm sorry, segmentation errors. Or if you're looking at parsing, that's parsing again from plain text, um, including segmentation errors. If you actually correct segmentation first, which we could do for part of the data, uh, you will actually get uh, labeled attachment scores of above 90%. Um, in case that is meaningful to you guys, I'm sorry if I'm boring people who are not working on NLP. Uh, I should also say that this performance looks really, really good if you know your way around these kinds of numbers, but that you should probably expect worse performance on web data because all of these numbers are tested on the Hebrew tree bank itself. Um, but we expect this to improve as we annotate more and more from the genres that we're actually um, intending to add. Finally, I'll say a word about um, accuracy of correction. Um, we're looking at inter-annotator agreement to evaluate how well our human annotators are doing by double tagging 10 to 20% of the data in different genres. And so far, the results suggest pretty high agreement. We're also developing extensive guidelines, I think the most extensive to date for uh, Hebrew tagging and dependencies. They're currently about 90 pages and growing, and we plan to release them together with the revised data. All right, that's about all I had to say. I'm not sure if I have time for questions, but I'll thank uh, the team members who are producing this data, and of course, the members of uh, the IAHLT for helping us to fund this work. Thank you. Thank you, Amir.